Good day and welcome back. Today what I'd like to do is talk about linear programming and optimization. Linear programming has been around for quite a while and, and it's seen quite many uses. Uh, it's used a lot for resource allocation. In fact, the form formulation of, of linear programming started around World War II and in 1947 George Danzig published the simplex method. In fact, when he gave the presentation of the simplex method, a lot of people said, well, wait a minute, you're assuming everything is linear in these equations. That can't have many applications because, as we know, the world is mostly nonlinear. Well, it turned out that they were wrong. Linear programming is one of the most uh, used quantitative methods out there. And in fact, at about the same time, there was a Soviet by the name of Kantorovich who also developed an algorithm to solve linear programs. Today, linear programs have been developed with hundreds of variables, thousands of constraints, some very large problems. Today, what I'm going to do is just go through the graphical LP method, which, of course, is in two dimensions. And I'll start with this class example problem that I've got on the screen here. Notice that we're, we make uh, $4 profit for each table. We make $3 profit for each share. And then we've got information about the resources that they use to build these tables and shares. Uh, they need to be processed both in Department A and Department B. And each table takes four hours of processing in Department A and two hours worth of processing in Department B. Likewise, each chair takes two hours of processing in Department A and four hours of processing in Department B. You could think of it maybe as Department A being construction and Department B being finishing. And uh, we also know how many hours we have available. We've got 60 total hours available in Department A and 48 hours available in Department B. So then the problem is, how many tables and shares should you produce this week to maximize profit? All right, so the formulation of this problem will look like this. First, you really need to define your variables. So we'll say that x1 is the number of tables to produce and x2 is the number of chairs. Don't forget this step, it's really very important. Because we need to know what it is exactly that your variables represent. And we also need to know the units, and maybe the time. So it's the number of tables to produce this week, we could put that in our definition. If it's inches or pounds or dollars, whatever it is, you need to include the units. Be very explicit about the definition of your variables. Next, what we'll do is define the objective function. Okay, the objective function is maximizing or minimizing something. In this case, we're going to maximize z, and maybe I should define z up here as profit in dollars. Okay, and the function looks like this: uh, 4x1 plus 3x2. And then we put ST, which stands for subject to some constraints. And we have two main constraints. We've got department A and department B. Uh, so remember, for department A, we've got uh, four hours for each table, two hours for each chairs, and 60 hours available. So it goes like this. 4x1 plus 2x2 is less than or equal to 60. That's for department A. And likewise, for Department B, it's 2x1 plus 4x2 is less than or equal to 48. And we also have two more constraints. Uh, they're called non-negativity constraints, which means that you can't produce negative quantities of tables or shares. So this is included x1 greater than or equal to 0 and x2 greater than or equal to 0, like that. 
typically when I'm formulating problems, what I'll do is just put double N for non-negative instead of write them out. But when we get to Excel, you'll need to do this explicitly. Make sure that you insert the non-negative non-negativity constraints into Excel. We'll come back to that later. Okay, next we're going to graph this and uh, remember the way to do that, or at least one way, is to set one variable equal to zero and solve for the other one. So with this constraint, if x1 is 0, then x2 is 30. And if x2 is 0, x1 is 15. And likewise for the second constraint, if x1 is 0, x2 is 24. Sorry, I did that wrong. If x1 is 0, x2 is, uh, that would be 12, isn't it? And if x2 is 0, then x1 is the 24. Next, we can go ahead and make our graph. I'll use a new sheet on that. So, um, x1, x2. For the first constraint, we had 0, 30. 15, 0, it's about here, and it is a linear constraint, so we'll put it in like that, and uh, let's see, 0, 12, which is about here, and 24, 0, which is out here, okay, it goes like that, we'll label these number 1 and number 2, and Notice that they were less than or equal to constraints. So typically less than or equal to constraints will be feasible going down. But that's not always the case. Uh, especially if you've got a positively sloped uh, constraint, you really need to think about it. One way to think about it is to take a point, say the origin, plug it into the constraint, the origin is 0, 0, plug it in to the constraint, and if it's feasible, you know you're right. So if I produce 0 tables and, and 0 chairs, that's less than or equal to 60, right? And if I produce zero tables, zero chairs, that's less than equal to 48, right? So there's our check. Indeed, it goes down, and it's feasible going down. And next thing you want to do then is, is figure out where they all overlap. Notice that non-negativity confines us to the first quadrant. We're not concerned about this negative space down here. And where they all overlap is where our feasible region is. So that's the shaded area right here. That's called the feasible region. Because the optimal solution has to be feasible and it has to be in that region. Notice that this isn't feasible because it violates constraint 1. Likewise, this isn't feasible because it violates constraint 2. This space out here violates both constraints. So this is the only overlapping region here that's feasible. In the next video, we'll go ahead and figure out where the optimal solution there's three basic approaches that you can use in the graphical method to figure this out. Talk to you then.